Ben, Hawk, Brian, and Liz have been stacking, framing, snapping, sheathing, and taping. Now they're going to stand that wall as soon as they make a little space for their fingers. First, they slip 2x4 blocks under the top plate so they can slide through the straps that will hook onto the forklift and do the brunt of the heavy lifting on this long wall. When everyone's ready, he booms up and in at the same time to raise the wall, but being careful not to yank it off the floor deck. When the wall's in place, they brace the ends plumb, unhook the forks, and Liz discovers that she's short. The next day, they frame the shorter gable walls and stick to the old 20th century method of lifting, with your back. It's usually a good idea to plumb the outer walls a little better than plumb to make it easy to stand this wall. Then, when it's all stood, pull them tight together with the top plates. Step one after standing the wall is to make sure the bottom is where it's supposed to be. It doesn't matter if the wall is plumb if the bottom is a half inch off the line. So whack it into place and nail it down. Again, don't nail in the middle of a stud cavity or someone with a formerly new hole saw is going to come looking for you. Now, tack the corners together and hold up the wall until you adjust the rest of the bottom plate. Sometimes you can lean out a window and whack the wall with a sledgehammer, but sometimes you need to pull it in from the inside. Here, they use structural screws, blocks, and a clamp to pull the wall to a string line. You can push it out with a whack or a toenail, depending on what it takes. Usually, driving a nail 45 degrees to vertical into solid framing below will move the wood a little bit. And it worked in this case, too. Again, not nailing next to the studs is known as a career-limiting strategy. With the wall bottoms on the line, focus on making the tops of the walls an exact projection upward. Cat plates tie the ends of the wall together by overlapping at the ends, so some sections are left off when the walls are framed on the floor. Break them over studs as usual, and you can often cut them in place as you work your way around the building. In the case of intersecting interior walls, Hold the plates back from the layout lines so there's about 4 inches of space to plumb up the interior wall. Here's a bonus tip. A good way to attach the walls together is with ladder backing between the studs. Most carpenters begin the cap plate with 5 nails in the end of the perpendicular wall and break the opposite end over a stud. Then they flush up the cap plate with the top plate and nail above each stud. To finish a section, Ben cuts the plate stock in place rather than playing up the ladder, down the ladder. He puts two nails over each stud and four over the next stud because the top plate below is broken over that stud. This ties the cap into both sections of top plate. The wall is still pretty wobbly at this point, so chances are even after the cap plates are down, it'll still be a little humpy. Needless to say, don't break a cap plate near where a top plate breaks. You should keep the breaks at least four feet away from each other. You may have noticed that the floor is covered with a rubber mat. This is because the 2x6 tongue and groove subfloor is finished flooring. Normally, you could nail blocks to the subfloor anywhere you want to brace the walls, but with expensive flooring underfoot, they have to run 16 footers across the floor to anchor braces into. Next time, we'll go deep on straightening the humpy wall tops to pull them into line with their bottoms. 